Hello, everyone. Um, as everyone is coming in, or if more people are coming in, that is great. Um, remember, we ask that everyone have their um, have their camera on. Um, we appreciate it. Drew is sort of the gatekeeper, and he will kick you out if your if your camera is not on. Ooh. <clears throat> Gotta lay down the law. I'm yes. telling you. <laughs> um, so here we go. Um, so as you can see, for those of you who have been to one of the other three Ask Me Anythings, this one is a bit different um, because before it was um, you all, it was done as a webinar and you all's camera was not on but at the request of the executive team, we have opened it up to where everyone's camera is on so Dr. Johnson can see who she's talking to because some of you she has not met. Um, and so we're doing it this way. As far as the um, questions go, you can submit the questions in the chat to me. Um, if you click on my name, like it would go just to me and everyone else wouldn't see it. Um, and then I will actually for this one say um, Yolanda has the next question. Yolanda will introduce herself to Dr. Johnson and tell the department she works in and then ask her question. And that is pretty much how we will proceed with this one. Um, Drew and I sort of hashed this out earlier today. We didn't really know how it was gonna go, but we are gonna make it work. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump in. Um, and have some fun. Keith, Stop. may I ask the first question? You may, Drew. Okay, I will jump in. Um, Hi, Dr. Johnson. I'm uh, Drew Gutierrez. I work for the Communications and Creative Services Office. Um, we've been reading your uh, biography. Obviously, you came to us from Washington. You also went to college in Washington. We're wondering, are you from there originally? And even though things have gotten better this week, um, how have you adjusted to the East Coast uh, humidity? <laughs> Oh, I appreciate the question, Drew, uh, and nice to meet you. First of all, um, please, everybody call me Amy. Nobody calls me Dr. Johnson, uh, and it often takes me a minute to realize that I'm the person you're speaking to when you do that. So uh, as long as you're comfy with it, I prefer that. So uh, I am originally actually from Los Angeles, which is maybe something you don't get from my bio, and uh, lived there for a number of years. I then moved up with my family when I was still fairly young. I think I was six-ish uh, um, to Washington State. We had family still down in Southern California and would go to visit a fair bit, but uh, lived for the majority of my adolescent years through college in Western Washington. And then I went to work for uh, the Department of Social and Health Services for about five years, did that for five years. Um, and, but I, I will say that was sort of a pit stop because when I graduated college, uh, the thing that I thought I wanted to do was to become a faculty member in either English or communication. I had double majored in those subjects as an undergrad and was trying to make a decision about what I wanted to do with my life. Both of my uh, programs were encouraging me to get my PhD in either English or uh, communication. And I felt very pressured to like pick my favorite parents kind of thing. Uh, and I couldn't take it. And so I went to work for Washington State Government, did that for a period of time, as I said, and then I got myself uh, and I can talk more about this part as people are interested, but um, through a series of events, I hit upon the field of student affairs as a way to sort of blend some of the social and social services and health work and strategic planning and legislative work that I had been focusing in on and blend it with my goals to become a faculty member. So my family or my partner and I moved all the way across the country to Philadelphia and I went to the University of Pennsylvania and lived there for I think seven years uh, thereabouts. Uh, and unfortunately my mother went through a health scare so we had to 
return to the West Coast and wanted to be closer. So from Philly, we moved back down to Los Angeles, where I worked at the University of Southern California. And for those of you who have heard me talk about this before, I, I used to say USC, but I have come to learn that I can't do that here because it means something different. So, uh, and interestingly, um, a little known tidbit, Joe Singer and I worked together at USC so I've, I've got some family, some Trojan family in the house. Yeah, so Joe, that's where I know Jill from. We worked together um, there. So I did that for nine years and then ended up back up in the Pacific Northwest, again, due to some need to be closer to my family. Uh, but this time on the eastern side of the state, which for those of you who know Washington State, it, it's kind of like Northern California and Southern California. They operate like totally different planets. Um, so Eastern Washington and, and lived in Spokane. And so now I'm back. So I have to say, I'm thrilled to be back on the East Coast. I think in many ways, I, moving to Philadelphia in particular was a huge culture shock for me, not only just living, you know, transitioning from a more kind of suburban environment to downtown Philadelphia, which, you know, for those of you who've been there is, is a true city um, in all of its forms. And we absolutely loved it and didn't have any plans to leave. But again, some family needs um, changed our, our uh, trajectory. But I will say, having moved there, moved to Philadelphia, knowing no one, as some of you may have had an experience, you know, you, you sort of build a family and a community there. And so when we came back to the West Coast, when we went back to the West Coast, we were far from that Philadelphia family. So in many respects, I was very excited to return to the East. I have never lived in the Southeast, so this is cool and that is new. And I will say the humidity's amped up a little bit here from what I remember in Philly. <laughs> you you all kicked it up a little notch. Um, so uh, yeah, the hair is still acclimating. Uh, what can you do? Uh, but but it's nice to be back. Uh, and you know, I at some point I hope this pandemic's over so we can go back and visit you know the places in New Jersey, and Philadelphia, and elsewhere that we used to hang out and spend time with our our friends and sort of local family at the time. So yeah, thank you for the question, Drew. So I'm not a complete newbie with respect to the East Coast. Is all right. Yeah. Um, thank you. And in regards to the hair, I cut all mine off. Oh. But my understanding, <laughs> it takes a lifetime for your hair to get acclimated to the humidity. Does it? And well, then I just cut it off. <laughs> um, so, which you partly answered the question that I was going to have next, oh, crap, because as a kid, no one wakes up and says, when I grow up, I want to be the vice chancellor of student affairs. So right. <laughs> So like as a kid, what did you envision yourself being? What like what did you say was gonna be your job? For like me, I wanted to be a doctor so I could have a swimming pool. That was my whole thing. Nice. And neither yeah. of those have happened, so yeah, I will say, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if you all have had this experience. It, I, my mom was a teacher, uh, particularly a uh, public school teacher and English as a second language instructor in LA. And so I think probably somewhere in the back of my mind, I always knew I was going to be a teacher. Um, but I rebelled against that for a long time because my mother said that that was what I was going to do. And I was like, you're wrong. So I went through different phases. I was going to dance on Broadway. I was, I was going to be an attorney. I did, I, I was very interested in sports and did sports myself and so there was a period of time right after high school I actually worked for a local radio station and helped produce a sports radio show and so for a while I thought I was going to go into sports sports broadcasting um, and I actually interned while in college um, for our, our local um, CBS it was emerging the CBS affiliate there so a um, couple of different career paths but yeah those are the biggies and then and then sort of shifted to um, to higher education and and uh, student affairs specifically, but you're right. Never in my never in my mind was, man, if I could only just be a vice chancellor for student affairs, life would be set. I think you're good though to have a focus on a pool. That would have been legit. I, I would have that would have been a good argument. Yeah, but you know, I'm, it's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen. Um, all right, so we're going to take some questions from the Carolina Union staff. And actually, Sydney, you're up first. <clears throat> Hi, I wasn't expecting to go first. My name is Sydney. I'm one of the um, leadership development program coordinators in student life and leadership. Um, and my question is, what have you learned about Carolina so far for better or for worse? Mm -hmm. Uh, I appreciate the question, Sydney. So one of the things that uh, has been very powerful for me, and I've had a couple of experiences um, like this in my life, uh, career-wise, but uh, 
there has only been one other institution, I think, for which I've worked that I sort of immediately felt the sort of palpable sense of community like I felt here at Carolina. And I have talked about this in a couple of other, other interviews just because it has been so uh, it has been so powerful to me, but uh, I joke that from the minute I sort of hung up the phone with uh, with the provost to say I was coming, my email box started to fill up and I started to get calls and texts from people saying, we're so excited to have you come and, you know, alumni, parents, people I, I like no connection to. So one of the things that I have really learned is that the idea of the Tar Heel family, the Tar Heel community really has meaning to people and it is something that I have felt from the minute I said I was coming. So um, that's been great. Um, you know, I think the other thing that I am sort I'm just mindful of, and I don't know, it, maybe it's learning, maybe it's not, is never having lived in the South before, the really strong tradition of culture and history that exists here. And I think coming in as somebody who doesn't benefit from that, that can be both, you know, a hindrance, but it can also be an asset to being able to sort of talk about things a little bit differently. And, you know, particularly too, from having lived in large urban environments with a lot of diversity and a lot of different experiences, I think has been an asset um, to be able to have that conversation. But that has been the other thing that I have really learned. And then, you know, nothing has prepared me to start a new job like this in a pandemic. I don't know if anybody else has relatively, you know, recently started their jobs, but it has just been, full tilt boogie from the word go, you know? <laughs> um, and that has been hard, but but here is, you know, here is where that idea uh, and the the, uh, the sense uh, of community and the Tar Heel family really has power because I, I, it has, I have been so fortunate to be able to lean on and get the partnership and support of so many folks and really, I, I would not have survived this without them uh, or been any use to the university. So. Honestly, that's that's been my biggest takeaway from this experience so far. I, I you know, I hit uh, 30 days on like the 3rd of September. So I'm still, you know, I'm still in my, <laughs> my very early honeymoon period. <laughs> uh, I think about day two honeymoon was over. Yeah, <laughs> we, we had a hurricane on my very first day and I was like, what <laughs> have I done? <laughs> My very first hurricane, but I, I was pleased to say I, I made it through and it was all fine. So I'm feeling good about my odds at this point. All right. Next we have Charu. Hello, Dr. Amy. So I'm Charu from Business Office, working as the Assistant Director for Business Services. So my question is, any fond memories that you would like to share with us from UPenn, South Cal, as well as from oh. Washington, and any amazing or fun thing that you would like you know about UNC when you join? Oh, um, gosh, so fun. I have so many fond memories of every place I've ever lived. Um, uh, I, I honestly, you, you, I feel like um, I've been put on the spot to give some really powerful answer. I, uh, I, what, I, I will tell you some of the things that I miss most about the places that I've lived. So both Philadelphia and Los Angeles, I miss the food. Really great food. And in particular, uh, you know, we had food trucks in Philadelphia that are a huge part of the industry there. Um, and for a long time when I lived there just up and down the street and as a, we actually had to put some limits on it because they uh, they were preventing other people from coming to the community and parking. <laughs> there were so many food trucks, but that's what got me through graduate school. Was a really cheap, wonderful food in Philadelphia. Um, the other thing that Philadelphia has that uh, that uh, reminds me, or UNC reminds me of, is the history and the tradition. That was amazing and wonderful. Um, I loved being. We traveled all up and down the East Coast um, when we were there. I, I missed being able to do that, and so again, that's one of the many reasons why I'm here. You know, Los Angeles was the place that I was born and grew up. Um, my son was born there, so I have some really fond memories of that and that whole experience. And again, there is some alignment between the idea and the concept and how powerful the experience of being a part of the Trojan family, it, it aligns with sort of the Tar Heel family in the same way. So um, I, I was very fortunate to have some fantastic colleagues like Joe and others uh, during that time and really miss that sense of community. Uh, but I, I have, I have gained it 
back now um, and probably twice over uh, coming to Carolina. So uh, that's been great. Um, and I will tell you what I'm not going to miss about Washington State, um, which is the bad winters. Uh, I understand you don't have so much of that here. So I'm looking forward to that. Trade off for the humidity. Yeah, you may get like two inches of snow. And I understand that you like cancel school when that happens, right? Just without yeah. fail? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, okay. um, you know always, always pray for um, condition three. <laughs> Is that what they call it? Yeah. Like it, when it rises to that level? Condition yeah, you three. always want condition three. That's what you want. <laughs> oh, good. This I've learned something today. This is awesome. Thank you. All right, next we have Eric. You're up. <clears throat> I'm Eric, I'm uh, the painter and carpenter for the building. I work among the uh, rest of the facilities suite down here. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward question on my end. Are you a coffee person, a tea person, or neither? Oh, all right. So uh, I grew up in Western Washington, the home of Starbucks. I will just leave that there. I, although I will say, <laughs> I will say, I, I drink both coffee and tea, but I, I don't, I don't get through the day without. Um, without some coffee. And in particular, I, I don't have a lot of vices, you know, but I, I do, I, I almost, I got away from this for a while. I'm sort of scared to admit it because it's really um, a kind of decadent habit, but I almost have a daily latte habit, almost. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to be mindful about my finances, but that's, but I, I will tell you the one thing that really freaked me out about having my, the oh, like the one thing, there was just one thing, but I was absolutely panic stricken when I got pregnant, I wasn't going to be allowed to have coffee anymore. And it almost was a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, son, my son's turned out to be okay. He's kind of worth it, but I, it was tough. Well, glad he's worth it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if, um, you, if you meet him, we did not have this conversation. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll never... <laughs> I'll never tell, but there's Thank like you. 40 other people that I can't make that promise for. So, um, Amber, you're up. <clears throat> Hello, it's uh, Amber. I'm the Director of Business Services. And my question is, what is your favorite sport and sporting team? Oh, my favorite sport and sporting team. So I, I grew up as a swimmer. Uh, so in particular, Keith's idea of a pool really resonates with me. Maybe maybe we could timeshare our pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so I'd really like to have that to be able to get back in, in swimming shape again. I have never, you know, been fortunate enough to have a, a pool at my house or really be close enough to access one on a regular basis, but that would be great. So, that, I mean, that's probably my sport, although, um, I, and I will say more recently, um, I grew up a big fan of football, particularly, you know, as my interest uh, in sports broadcasting. So as a big fan um, of the Hawks growing up, uh, I'm not such a, uh, having, you know, worked in the industry, even just a little bit as an intern, it has, um, you know, it's ruined my love for it a little bit. Uh, and I, so I no longer look at it quite as fondly as I, as I did. Um, I will say more recently, I've really, my family um, and I have become big baseball fans. And so Dodgers and the M's are, are probably our two primary teams. So I guess it depends on whether you're talking about something I do myself or uh, what I watch, but those are, prob those are probably the biggies in my world. Yeah, thanks for the question. Thank you. I love baseball. So glad baseball yeah. season is back. Oh. Yeah, although the, the, the weird fans in the stands are, I, I, I'm not down with that. Yeah. Yeah, the computerized, computer-generated fans. I, I can't <laughs> no, that doesn't work. Benita Brown, my dear friend. Benita, where are you on my screen? Now I am unmuted. Hello. Uh, Hello. I am Benita Brown, the guest service manager at the uh, union. And my question, uh, do you have a pet? And if so, what kind? I do not have a pet. Um, yeah, so, but uh, stay tuned, because here again, if you talk to my son, uh, you will know that one of the things I uh, bribed, maybe that's not the right term, but um, him with in terms of moving to North Carolina is maybe this would be the opportunity to get a dog. So I grew up, I'm a big fan of all animals, but uh, so a little tidbit, I'm allergic to nearly all of them. Um, so when I, my, when I grew up, when I was growing up, my family owned dogs um, and I would, uh, 
It was not uncommon for me to have an allergic reaction, but I think I built up a tolerance. Unfortunately, after I went away to college and wasn't exposed to them anymore, I would come home and I would have, you know, full on rash. So I have to be super careful, but I love animals and I still haven't forgiven my mother for never getting me a horse growing up. So. <laughs> well, North Carolina is a little bit of horse country. So. I know, I know. I can't, I don't think I could afford a horse, but you know, it's, I can dream. All right, next we have Aide Marchese. <clears throat> Hello. Um, my question is, what song do you always sing along with? Oh, sorry. My name is Aide Marchese and I'm a business service coordinator at the business office. Yeah. And my question is, um, what song do you always sing along with and can you sing a little bit for us? No. <laughs> Let me just answer the latter part first. Mm -mm. Um, I, so I, a full disclosure, I, I do like to sing, but I sang in choirs all growing up, um, choir in church, choir through school, whatever, but I am not a soloist. Um, so I will not do that and I feel a little self-conscious, but I will tell you anything by Stevie Wonder. That, that is the reason why I asked, because I heard you can sing. Oh, yeah, so you, you've been misled. <laughs> I, I can sing, but I'm, again, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, deep background singer. Um, <laughs> I, I do love it though. And honestly, I, so I sang in like our community choir when I was at, uh, at, as an undergrad, I sang in Philadelphia. I auditioned for our community choir there. Um, and also sang in our, we actually had a student affairs choir at USC. I don't know if Joe remembers that. We had a student affair, if you don't remember, we, uh, Mona led it. Um, so anyway, we had a student affairs <laughs> choir at USC and I, I sang in that and I loved it. We did holiday music mostly, um, but I would love at some point when the job gets a little bit more settled, I, I actually haven't investigated this. I'm guessing there's probably a community corral or symphony corral or something um, in the Triangle area, but I would, I would love to do that again. So, but I grew up on a lot of, you know, um, sacred music, singing, you know, in churches, playing piano in church. I, I accompanied um, as well. So, but I, I, you don't want me to solo. Who, who told you I could sing? That's really what I want to know. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to that person. Singer, was that you? Uh, if you ask my colleagues, I have ways of learning things. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm coming to you for intel. <laughs> nice to meet you. <clears throat> Sarah. <clears throat> Hi, Amy. My name is Sarah Levine. I'm the Student Activities Program Coordinator in the Student Life and Leadership Office. I'm the person who keeps sending you contracts that you have to sign. <laughs> so, sorry about that. <laughs> Glad to do it. Thank you so much for supporting QAB and, and all that they're doing. Um, my question is actually about books. Um, and so kind of a three part question. So what book do you always recommend to others? What are you currently reading and what's next on your list? Well, I will tell you what is next on my list because I just got this. So Fire and Stone, the making of the University of North Carolina under Presidents Edward Kidder Graham and Harry Woodburn Chase. So that's going to be um, next on my list. I will say one of the things that I, I spend a lot of time reading now um, is uh, and without giving away the store, I'm happy to share with you that my son has a rare medical condition. And so I do a lot of reading um, in research journals and things like that, unfortunately, for fun to sort of study his condition. So I don't end up reading as much for fun. Most of the stuff I do is reading for work now. Um, a book that I always recommend to others. I don't know that I always recommend a book to others. Um, I, have, I don't think I've been asked for too many book recommendations. Oh, can I think on that and get back to you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely can. Uh, you know what? I'm good. We're going to hang up today and I'm going to think, oh, duh. Um, you know, here's something. I, I was an English major in school, though. And so I grew up reading just a whole lot of different kinds of literature, you know, um, uh, from Shakespeare and a lot of Brit lit, which I was really interested in at the time. Um, uh, and then a, a lot of contemporary writers sort of later on in my career too. So I, I but I don't know that I have like an all time favorite book or something that I regularly go back to or, or um, recommend. I'm going to think on it. I'm going to send you a note. Thanks. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Lee. 
Awesome. Hi, Amy. My name Hi. is Lee Roberts. I'm the Student Organizations Program Coordinator in Student Life and Leadership Office, so I work with all of the organizations. Um, but my question to you kind of has to do with student orgs, because um, I am curious, um, were you involved in undergrad and would you mind sharing like a good memory or a past memory? It, it doesn't have to be good, just a past memory that you have of being in a student union or being in an organization that you want to share. Oh, sure. Uh, so yeah, I was active and it's one of the things that, you know, when I look back on my career and certainly as I think about when I was transitioning into student affairs, I had never thought about student affairs as a career, but uh, I went back and talked to some of my mentors and in particular was trying to sort of figure out how I blended all of these things that I was interested in. And um, notably the um, woman who was uh, at the time that I was graduating, she was the chair of our communication department. So somebody with whom I interacted pretty closely when I went back and was talking to these folks and trying to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life, she was serving as an uh, interim vice uh, president of student affairs. And she said to me, have you thought about this field as a chance to do all that? But it's sort of weird that I hadn't, it hadn't occurred to me. I was a tour guide. I was a teaching assistant for communication. Um, I was um, active. I was actively involved in a lot of programs for orientation. And in particular, um, really uh, actively um, worked with several of our um, admission uh, staff reps to try to facilitate access access to education, particularly access to higher education is always something that's been really important to my family. So I worked on several programs. We had a program called Volunteers in Service to Admission Visa, which was about getting underrepresented students um, into college. So I did a lot of work with that in down in the Olympia area um, with some underrepresented communities and trying to get um, them interested in pursuing college and in, in particular the possibility of attending University of Puget Sound if they wanted to, but it wasn't a requirement that you, you went to Puget Sound. Um, so those were really powerful experiences for me. And actually there was a period of time in which I thought maybe I would go into admission um, because I was doing that work and really loving it and had developed some close um, uh, close colleagues. And, and again, it sort of reinforced this, this big value that my family had for access to education. Um, although my mother would say it was private education, not public education. So I should have been focused on it. Just so you know, I still have my mother's um, voice clearly running through my my head. Um, aside from that, I, I mean, I, I think those were uh, honestly the the time that I spent uh, working in the classroom as a TA. That was something that distilled for me that I've got to teach in college. Um, so that was really powerful. Um, I helped create, I, I started a, a dance team at uh, the University of Puget Sound. And so we were pretty actively involved there. And I love that work. and. Uh, loved and still uh, love to dance. Um, I, so I think those are the things that I would point to most specifically, but, you know, broad based experiences, not like one time in the union or something, but, um, you know, th those are the things that stand out for me. And I, I think really have been, you know, set me on my path that I'm in now. I'm so grateful for it. I, you know, once I found student affairs and actually started working in the field, I've never looked back. This is absolutely, this is, this is, I'm all in. This is the work for me. This is where it's at. Yeah, I have some experience with orientation as well. And I didn't realize how much I was in the union for most of the time, right? Like you don't really realize. And yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And then, you know, then flash forward and I was an orientation director because I was, you know, as I said, I, I did orientation. Um, I was an orientation advisor too. Um, so it's interesting how my world sort of came full circle to do a lot of the things and supervise a lot of the things that I was involved in, you know, later in life. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate cool. It. Thank you for the question. I just want to point out every time you mention dance, Noel, our operations manager, face no, just lights Noel, up. Noel, where? Like, oh, why? Like, <laughs> Noel, are you a dancer? Uh, yeah. it, yes, I am too. And so is Janae. I don't know if y'all can see her face, but she's dancing over in the corner too. Um, so <laughs> we're both pretty involved in so, dance. Oh, I'm so glad. So, uh, do you have particular genres within the field of dance that you do? Uh, all, all kinds of uh, different dance. I, in undergrad, I was on the marching bands, um, uh, in the uh, marching bands dance team. But um, uh, probably one of my uh, fun ones to mention is I used to compete in Irish dancing um, for a little bit. So that was oh, that was how fun. cool! Oh, very good. And Janae, how about you? Yeah, so I actually uh, teach part time. Uh, I teach dance at a local studio. So I was going to ask you what your favorite style is. I am a contemporary fan. Are you? Jazz, yeah. 
Yeah, so I grew up um, doing like ballet, ballet and modern uh, jazz, probably those were the sort of foundations. Um, and, you know, the, the thing that I struggled with uh, that now you would know to look at me, but I was almost as tall as I am now when I was in the fourth grade. So, in, so, which was, you know, my dad had me like, you know, he, he was signing me up to be the first female supersonic at the time, because he was convinced that I was going to be like six, eight. <laughs> Needless to say, that didn't pan out, but I never really had the body style. I have always been sort of more stocky and tall and really much more athletic. So in particular, when I say I want to dance on Broadway, you know, I saw certain Broadway dance, a particular West Side Story, the dancing there, I felt like changed my life, this really sort of athletic kind of form of dance. So I became very interested in that and later on in my life hip-hop was something that I really enjoyed um, so and the dance team that we created was more of hip-hop in style a little, little modern but hip-hop and mod so anyway how cool yeah. I know I know Keith I'm not going to dance either no I was not gonna ask you. So we, <laughs> we actually have three dancers on staff I'm not gonna say who the third one is because oh. your face did not light up when you said um, dance so oh. the next person um, next question is coming from Alexandra okay hi Amy how are hey, you I'm good Alexandra how are you good I, I wanted to ask like what are some of your interests that you have outside of work and what's on your bucket list mm. Yeah, so interest outside of work. I love to do so many things. I, I really, uh, I enjoy biking and um, running. Uh, that's a lie. I don't really love running, but I run. Um, but trail running in particular is my favorite thing to do. I, I do miss that in LA. I lived right at the base of the Griffith Park Hills and I used to be able to trail run almost any day of the year that I wanted and I miss that a lot. Um, kayaking, swimming, um, you know, almost any sort of outdoor activity, love, love, love. Um, in addition to that, music, dance, um, singing, play, playing uh, piano, all have been big influences in my life and music is still something that is, you know, is without question the thing that makes me feel most centered and brings me back, you know, to, to uh, you know, a sense of myself when I'm, when I'm feeling low. Uh, so I turn to that a lot and i like to play piano. Um, what else do I do? I like to, uh, I, I really, I, I can't get enough time hanging with my family. I think probably all of us feel that way. We don't get to spend enough time there. And so any chance I get to hang out with my partner and my son um, is something that I want to do doing almost anything. I do love to read. I like puzzles. I like trivia. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some things on the list, but, but those are big things. And I'm sorry, then, Alexandra, did you have a second part of your question that I yeah, what's on your bucket list? My bucket list. Okay, um, bucket list. I, one of the things, my family owned a business growing up. My mom was a teacher, but my family owned a business, uh, a shoe store, and my dad uh, in particular managed that, spent most of the time. And he worked seven days a week for a long, long, long time. And we were never really able to travel um, in a way or do those things. We found other ways to spend time as family. But um, that is one of the things that I hope to do more, and in particular hope to do more with my son. Uh, so you know, when we lived in Philadelphia before, I mean, I, I don't, uh, certainly now is a weird time, so not a good analog, but um, I used to just, I used to laugh at the fact that I could travel to Europe more quickly and more cheaply on any given day than I could fly home to the West Coast. And so we'd always said, you know, one, one of these times, we're just going to plan a week and we're just going to go. And it never, ever, ever happened. And so I'm, I'm going to spend some time, I want to spend some time, particularly now that we're in a place with a good, you know, um, airport and a good hub and, and a place that we can get to Europe and to Asia and to, you know, uh, Africa. I, I'd love to go on a safari with my son and see these, you know, places that I have long read about and always wanted to visit. So that's, that's probably the biggie. My other thing that is a bucket list item, my sister, I have a younger sister, um, and she and I have long planned for many, many, many years to do the Seattle to Portland bike race, the STP, if anybody knows it. Um, and we just never seem to figure out a way that we're in the same place to be able to train and do it. But that is also on our list. Um, so stay tuned. Hopefully we'll get that in. Uh, now that I'm again on the East Coast, I, I, I don't know how we're gonna work it out, but it's gonna happen one of these days. <laughs> All right. So our next question was going to come, as they said, it's already been answered oh. it was from Cassie. That's the third dancer um, that I know about on staff, but I will let her say hello and introduce herself and tell you where she works. All Even right. She does not have a question. And she has to tell me about her dance background. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> hey, Dr. Johnson, and I'm Cassie Thomas. I am one of the assistant directors in the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. Um, so I know we've communicated a little bit. We have. Um, 
So, but yeah, that was pretty, that was gonna be my question in that, you know, I know um, with the pandemic and everything, student affairs can be really exhausting and it's really easy for burnout. And um, I guess to kind of piggyback off of what Alexander said, how do you prevent getting burnt out? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I think the honest answer, I would love to tell you that well, that just never happens. Uh, but, I, you know, the reality is uh, I, I don't really prevent from getting burnt out, uh, I think, like most of us. But um, and, and hopefully, you know, as we've talked in the town hall and I've spent more time meeting people and getting hearing about their experience and, you know, what they're worried about and what's hard about the job and what keeps them up at night and all these kinds of questions um, is I'm, I'm really very concerned about our, our health and wellness and our self-care and making it clear that um, you know we've got to start putting some parameters on so many things you know making it safe and okay and normal and expected to be able to say I need to take some time away right I need a sick day I, I need to take a week of vacation I need to be at home with my family we need for that to be okay and to not feel guilty and not feel as though we can't do it and that extends to you know the people um, that extends to our work and the people who report to us um, really making that very clear that we are absolutely all about making sure that particularly in times like we're in right now I mean the pandemic and what's going on at both the national and international stage in terms of politics and systemic racism and all of these kinds of things are just overwhelming and exhausting and I I, I know that and I feel that uh, and I know other people you know I come from a place of privilege so I know other people feel it even more poignantly than I do and so we, we have to we have to schedule time and be really intentional I think about doing everything we can to prevent it I will say one of the best things for me it's definitely hard but one of the best things for me um, and a real um, reality check is becoming a parent. You know, I go home every day and my kid doesn't care about the bad day that I've had. He needs help with his math homework, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which that's a whole nother problem. We'll talk about that later. Um, but anyway, so, you know, that is a good reality check for me and really as much as possible trying to, when I'm with him, be present with him, you know, when I'm with him and I'm with my family, be present there. When I'm here, be present here. But I will say, you know, I, I also, also appreciate the work that we do and I, I've said this I know in other contexts I am um, there are sometimes when you know I go to a restaurant not anymore of course but when I you know have gone to a restaurant and I you know look up at the server sort of longingly like you know I bet you don't take your work home with you in quite the same way you know I would love to be able to walk away from a job and really walk away um, but that would probably also that would be on you know a, a, a pro and a con for me i i love the fact that i what i do is important to me it matters to me it is the kind of thing that i take home i take that really as more of an asset than a curse um but i i will also say we are fortunate in some ways in that you know the work will always be here when our students are around and they're always around the work is there and so that creates an environment in which I don't feel guilty and I try to, I tell myself not to feel guilty and really try not to because when I need to, you know, take a couple hours to go to a doctor's appointment or when I need to take half day off to take care of something with the car, right? Because I don't worry about the fact that I'm not putting in the hours, first of all, and I don't worry about the fact that, you know, if and when it's convenient for me at 10 o'clock at night, if I want to focus in on something and, and spend time in the office at that time, as opposed to during the day and consider that a trade off, that's helpful. You know, I have a lot of friends and colleagues who work a very nine to five job and they can't dictate their own schedule and they aren't available to work in the evening and they do have to ask um, permission in a much different way than I do and I hope we all do um, to sort of take a few hours here and there or to take a vacation week. Um, so I that's that's a that's something to you know be grateful for too that that I'm able to and that we are able to and I, I say that very intentionally. We are able to say, you know, I, I can't come in tomorrow morning, but the work will get done. Right. And it'll get done at a time and a schedule that works for me and that I can trust that I'm, you know, still supporting students. So, thank you. Beautiful that. answer. Thank you. Um, next, we have Damu. Damu, where are you? Hello. Hey, Damu. Um, 
I'm Damu Murray, uh, one of the graphic designers in the communication and creative, uh, um, creative services in the union. And my question is, what is the best vacation spot you have ever been to? Well, I'll give you my immediate answer, but it's sort of an easy layup kind of answer. Um, and actually, this is a little known tidbit. Um, so for many years, when I was at the University of Southern California, our two largest feeder high schools were actually in Honolulu, Hawaii. And so we used to go and regularly do admissions visits. And when I first started at USC, we did remote orientation programs in some of the major cities that were big sort of um, draw cities for us, for our students. And so we went and um, my first ever visit to Hawaii was when I was at USC. And unfortunately, the way we did orientations there, it was just a, it was like we, we did most of our off-campus orientations within a period of about a month and a half. And then we did like two in a weekend. So you'd have to travel to one site and do a quick two day program and then go to the next site. So I wasn't ever, ever able to spend very much time at an orientation, but it introduced me to Hawaii. And uh, I, I absolutely love the islands and the people and the culture. Getting to spend time there was very powerful. Working with students who were from there is very powerful. I was actually in our Hawaii club and danced in our luau when I was an undergrad. So um, there was a huge population, still is actually at the University of Puget Sound of folks from the islands. So it was great to get to be a part of that culture and that community for so long and um, my partner and I got married there. Um, so that probably, that was the best vacation. We, my, my uh, husband and I had been together for 10 years before we got married. I had not actually ever intended to get married, but we decided to do so. And we took 13, that was it, of our very close family and friends and went to Hawaii for this ceremony. And honestly, I, I mean, I still apologize to them about this sort of, we, we absolutely kept them moving from the day they arrived. We, you know, went snorkeling and kayaking and we biked down Mount Haleakala and did all of this stuff. And that vacation in particular was one of my very favorite times to go with my, my folks and my sister and, you know, my, my partner's family and a couple of our very dear friends um, from Philadelphia um, to go there. I was very meaningful. So I, I think that would be it. All right. Next um, is... Noel again. Hello again. Um, Hi. <laughs> uh, so I am the operations manager in the event services and facilities department here. Um, and so my question for you is, I know that after being here a little while myself, I've learned that everyone has a pretty big opinion about their favorite food spots um, mm. here in the area. So my question after being here for a little over a month now, um, have you found your favorite go to um, food spot or um, just something that you've really come to like uh, for pickup um, since you've been here? Yeah. Oh, it's a good question. We're still developing our favorites. Um, my family, big fans of sushi and my son in particular, which I just can tell you worst decision I ever made was to teach my child to like sushi because it is not an inexpensive dinner. Bad call. Uh, so, um, uh, what Akihana? Akihana? Is that what it is? I'm, I might be mispronouncing that in Carborough. I'm um, probably our favorite sushi spot. I'm trying to remember other good ones that we really like. Um, what is the Greek market? Not too far away. Mediterranean, Mediterranean Deli. Mediterranean Deli. Love, really. Just can't say enough good stuff about that. Um, what else? I, I, I will admit we've had a hard time. Although this is this is unfair. After living in Los Angeles and really, you know, having great Mexican food, nothing has been the same since. So we haven't found a good Mexican place. So if anybody really has a Mexican place that you love and recommend, let me know. Um, we have not tried Indian yet. That's on our go-to list. Uh, what else? Barbecue, we have had some hit. Oh, can I tell you something that I, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not offending anybody in the room. We tried the Sunrise Biscuit Kitchen the other day and I gotta say, not so hot. I, maybe I picked wrong. I wasn't wowed. I, I think I make a better biscuit than that biscuit, which is probably not safe. <laughs> but anyway, so I was disappointed about that because I was all I was all psyched about going to the Sunrise Biscuit. I'm gonna give it another shot because maybe I ordered wrong. Um, we've been to the pig. Had, had good barbecue there. Um, there was another barbecue place that I can't remember that we went to that I really liked also. 
went to Al's and had like an hour and 20 wait um, for our food, um, but that was good. Um, although I, I will say, you know, not my favorite burger that I've ever had, but I know that's a big fan here. Any, I, I am currently accepting any and all restaurant recommendations. So, oh good, okay, and Bobby has better biscuit places. So you're gonna have to send, you're gonna have to send them my way. In particular, the Sunrise Biscuit Kitchen is not far from our rental where we are right now. So I was, I actually, I held off because I was afraid that once I, you know, opened that door, it was gonna be all over and I was gonna be there on a daily basis, but didn't pan out that way. So. Rise and meals for better biscuits. Okay, I, I'm gonna, I, before I get off this phone, or before I get off this call, I'm gonna have to make sure I copy down all of these places because I will not remember them all. Best Mexican is Toreros. Where is Toreros? You know, we will, um, I will have them email me suggestions. Oh, that'd be awesome. And then we'll just make you a list. That'd be great. Although I do, I did get a good, I did get a, when I first came in my basket with some recommendations that the group had pulled together and so helpful. I think that was where we found Mediterranean Deli, if memory serves. And that was awesome. So I appreciate everybody's advice and counsel there. That's good. All right. Rustin, you're up. I am feeling the hair today though. Like. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. I'm going to keep it going until we, till we end the quarantine. So it's going to be pretty long. Uh, Hi, Dr. Johnson. My name is Rustin McNiff. I work in the Office of Event Services. Uh, a little bit of a different question here, but who would be on your Mount Rushmore of role models? Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gosh, there are a lot of people. Um, Well, let's see. I mean, for I, I've already sort of given away one from a music perspective. I so admire and respect uh, and hold up Stevie Wonder. So he would be a biggie. Um, I love, uh, I'm a big fan of um, the brains and um, sort of worldview of Madeline Albright. Uh, Gosh, writers that I love, Zora Neale Hurston, um, Austin. I, there, gosh, I don't, who would be on my Mount Rushmore? Um, I'm a big fan, um, although, you know, I, I have sort of a love-hate relationship with him, but I find our, uh, I really appreciate his, his humor um, and still do uh, folks like um, John Oliver, um, John Stewart, David Letterman, huge David Letterman fan. Um, does that uh, does, that gives you some people? I feel like those probably yeah. aren't weighty enough, but <laughs> <laughs> but it speaks to you know I, I think it speaks to the things that sort of resonate with me and lift me up in terms of music and comedy. Um, I have a I have a, a, which I it's in storage right now and I can't get it, but um, the work of Judith Jameson and Alvin Ailey um, Dance Company. Um, so she she was always a big uh, she was somebody who's working. Um, uh, and art, I followed a lot and uh, really admire her. I felt like, you know, when I saw her dance, I felt like that's somebody that, you know, the style and the body type, like I could actually be a dancer. So those are people that have been meaningful in my life, um, as well as a lot of mentors, but you wouldn't know that. So those aren't good. But okay, so Rustin, you have to tell me, do you have a, a thing that you're not cutting your hair until the pandemic's over? Is that the deal? No, just... It's just worked out that way. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm not minding it. It's like you know, it, my hair goes along with the journey that we're going on. I hear you. I I'm I'm, symbolic. I just got my hair cut for the first time since the pandemic started. I I had my hair cut I think in like January or something, and so I just two weeks ago got a cut, and it was horrible. I was absolutely, but I was very fearful about going to get my hair cut, and and you know, anyway. So I I finally you know bit down and did it. And I'm glad I did because it was I was like making a bad Barbie doll impression or something there for a while. It was it was unpleasant. Well, thank you for answering the question. Also, thank the you. worst part about being on the East Coast and if you're from the West Coast is that your sports teams play three hours later and it's hard to stay up. Preach. So can I tell you that I spent three hours this weekend figuring out how we could get the Seahawks on TV for my son. No joke. It was horrible. The worst part. That is the bad, that is the bad part. Um, I think Amber had a second question, and I really hope my calling on her does not get me in trouble. No, no, no. Um, 
So my question is, do you ha would you like to share a fun fact about your uh, colleague, Joe Singer? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, I don't know that I have any fun facts about, you know, you know, honestly, what I, my, my I, it's not really a fun fact. I remember we used to, um, put Joe through the ringer in terms of running our, our auditorium, Bovard Auditorium, our primary sort of theater and an auditorium there. And I can just remember just the craziest requests, processes, um, you know, lack of planning. And the thing that I always remember about Joe and was so grateful is he just, he was unflappable. Like nothing seemed to piss him off, <laughs> to, to sway him in any way. I, I remember just thinking, you know, wanting to sort of find that thing that I could poke just to see what would happen. Uh, and that's, for, I don't know that it's a fun fact, but that is my recollection about Joe. And I, I'm curious to know if other people, has he, has he, you know, blown up at any point on anybody so i yeah i'm still not Sorry, fun Joe. i'm still not fun so <laughs> that's, no fun that let, let the record show that that is not what i said i yeah I, it, it preternaturally even peeled it's not normal joe i mean and i mean that in a loving way i'm, I'm not normal either so <laughs> just that's that one part of you that's just what i mean <clears throat> thank you yeah. Hi, Dave. It's back to you. You have like three things over here in these questions, and I'll just go ahead. Whatever, Keith. Whatever. Whatever. Oh, no, Whatever. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> Head bob and hand. <laughs> we are always going at it because he thinks he's fabulous. We just don't let him do that. Um, My mama said I was. Okay, yeah, mamas always say something, it's not necessarily truth, but okay. Um, I, am, I was going to ask another question, trying to get you to sing for us, but I'm actually um, curious about what was Joe during those years that you were okay. his person? No more Joe questions, <laughs> no. because y'all are going to get me in trouble. No more Joe questions. Wait, no. We're, we're moving on to the next question. You're not going to get me in trouble with Joe Singer. You are not going to do that. Oh, I want to hear it. I, I will talk offline. I got you. Yeah, you all can have private conversations all you want to. Um, I have a great relationship with, with Joe, and we are not going to ruin that. Yeah, okay. All right, but Ida did have some questions which she now does not want to ask. Um, um, and I forgot to tell the number one rule of ask me anything. I forgot at the very beginning. They can ask whatever they want to, but that does not mean you have to answer. Oh. But we're, we're like neck deep in it now. So I was going to say, <laughs> thanks a lot. Um, you mean I could ask, have punted on that earlier Joe Sears question? <laughs> she did um, ask if she missed it, how old is your son? My son is 12. Ooh. Yeah, going on 18. God bless. And the mm -hmm. eye, eye roll is in full force at my house. Can I just say? Yeah. No, Line girls are sassy. So when he goes to school, keep an eye on him. Yeah, will do. Will do. Appreciate it. All right. I think I have exhausted all of the questions that have been sent to me. Um, oh, one of my favorite people in the entire world now has a question. I'm going to turn it over to Tammy. Tammy. You're very kind. You know you're one of my favorite people too, right? You know well, that. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, hi, Amy. My name is Tammy Lambert, and um, I work here in Student Life and Leadership. And yeah, everyone kept taking my questions, right? Um, but this is, uh, I know we talked about things you like, like music and dance, uh, but do you, do you collect anything? You know, like art or just knickknacks or any, any kind of thing? Um, yeah. I don't collect anything really. And I'm bad about, uh, I do, you know, one of the things that I always tell myself is I do really like art. And in particular, I'm a big fan of sculpture. I find that that's a form that I really like a lot. And I tell myself that when we travel, one of the things I'm gonna try to do is buy a piece of art every place that we go. Um, and we've been eh, 
kind of good about that. Um, some places we have, some places we have not um, been as fantastic. Um, but I, I don't really collect anything. When I was a kid, again, big fan of horses. So I used to collect um, horses, horse things and plastic horses and used to like, weirdly dust them and take care of them and reorganize them and pretend like they were real. So yeah, that's, that's probably, cool. that's probably <laughs> I, I, that cars, I would have, you know, I instead did. of in the dirt, it was like, just, you know, they had personalities. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it, I, I appreciate you saying it's cool rather than disturbing, but yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to start collecting something now. Okay, look, you really wanted that horse, didn't you? <laughs> I really, I really did. I mean, I don't, I cannot stress to you enough. I used to, I used to buy horse books and just pour over the various breeds and plan where I would keep it. I mean, I really, I was, I was really into it. <laughs> All right, um, Janae has another question. All right, Janae. Hello again. Also, I realized I told you that I teach to you guys, but I didn't tell you what I did at the union. So I'm a reservation manager at the union. Um, but my question is, and I can't remember if you said this is one of your hobbies, so if you don't have suggestions, I understand. Um, I'm interested in someday in the future hiking like in the Pacific Northwest. Do you have oh. anything you suggest? Wow. Um, well, let's see. I mean, any place in the Cascades, I think, is really amazing. Um, I'm not, I will be honest and tell you, I do not remember any of the names of the trails. Um, but I loved, I did, you know, we've hiked all around Mount Rainier. I've done Mount St. Helens, particularly after, uh, you know, it, it, blew, it blew. That's fascinating. Um, you know, my partner has climbed Mount Adams a couple of times and says that is a life changing experience. He actually got a chance to do that through a class in graduate school, if you can believe it. Um, and one of my favorite things to do in the Cascades is if you get a chance to go there is go snowshoeing. That is in particular one of my favorite things that I have ever done. Um, and then aside from that, again, the, the trails and the hiking that I used to love to do, um, not in the Northwest, but down in Southern California was in Griffith Park, that whole area. Some really, but it's more, it is more, um, you know, that's not an opportunity necessarily to be out in nature as much, but great views and, you know, gorgeous weather. And so that's, that's really cool. That's something else I love to do. But yeah, if you get a chance to go to the Cascades, um, particularly anywhere around Mount Rainier and go snowshoeing, that's what I'd recommend is one of those experiences that you will say. So glad I did that. Stunning. Janae, I've done it. I'm the juice ain't worth the squeeze. That's just for me. But you know, you all know I hate going outside. So, oh. you know, so, you know, going outside and climbing to the top of a mountain was not the best day of my life. Keith, how are you going to get in the pool if you don't go outside? Are you one of these indoor pool guys? Oh, no, 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 no. Pool's different. No, if, I'm, if I can just lounge around, uh, okay. I can do it. Okay. But I pick a spot in the shade and just sort of like <laughs> lay there. I don't. Yeah. Fair so you hate going outside and you also hate volunteering. Which one you hate bet on? Okay. I muted you. Oh. We're moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we are at the end of our one hour um ask me anything. Um anyone who has any suggestions that they want to share for Amy to do, things to see, places to eat, anything like that, email that to, mm, email that to me and copy Drew because Drew has access to the whole union list. So um, it's gonna end up coming from him, but I'll compile it and we'll get that to you, Amy, and we'll just send it to the whole union in case anybody else, because there were some requests for it to be sent to everyone. That would be um, awesome. Amy, we want to thank you for being the fourth participant on our um, Ask Me Anything. You are in some very elite company um, <laughs> that includes Becky Mangini, um, oh, okay. Bubba Cunningham, the um, 
athletic director, mm -hmm. and um, Shelly Terry from Trademark and Licensing. So oh. you are number four. So I have not met Shelly, but I know the other folks, so that's great. Well, honestly, I have to say, y'all, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for scheduling this time. More than anything, I, you know, it has um, taught me that I need to come work in the union. So will you all find me in an office somewhere? Uh, <laughs> there may be one somewhere over there. We get, we'll get, we'll make it work. Okay. Um, Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so I appreciate you all coming as always. Um, thank you. Um, and we'll let you know what's going on with the next one. You all have a good rest of your afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Awesome to talk with you.